Excellent. So just to let you all know that we're um, recording the meeting. So um, if you're if you're not if you're not happy with that, then uh, then you'll need to to leave. Okay. You should have a prompt on your screen that tells you that. Cool. So Toomey's put a really great reminder just to say welcome to everybody and to put your mics on mute until you're called to speak. So that's really good. Thank you. And it's really great to see you all here. Um, we're very pleased that you can attend uh, tonight. Um, so this is kind of a, a bit of a relaunch of the parish, um, our engagement with parishes, and we do welcome any feedback from you. Uh, so please do feedback um, either to myself or Bev after and or um, to, to me. That would be great. Thank you. I'm going to start off just by introducing the officers that are here today. Um, so um, I'm going to start off with uh, um, Councillor Toomey. So do you want to introduce yourself, please, Toomey? <laughs> Good evening, everyone. Uh, for those who don't know, Toomey Hawkins, I'm the lead cabinet member for planning, policy and delivery at South Cambridgeshire District Council. And I'm the ward member for Caldicott Ward. Thank you. And Councillor Katie? Hello, I'm Councillor Katie Thornborough. I'm the Executive Council for Planning and Infrastructure at Cambridge City Council. And but I'm working uh, closely with the shared planning service for the, the emerging local plan. Thank you. Hi, um, thank you. And um, Adrian. Good evening all. I'm uh, Adrian. I'm South Cam's uh, I say Nutri officer. I've been in post for five months now. Thank you, Adrian. John. Good evening, all. Uh, glad I'm not on mute for a change. Uh, I'm John Shuttleworth. I'm the Principal Planning Enforcement Officer uh, at the Greater Cambridgeshire Planning Service, and I'll be talking to you later on about the changes that are coming up with planning enforcement or something else. Thank you, John. And Beverly. Hello, everyone. My name is Bev Charles. I'm EA to Heather. Um, and um, I'm the person you need to contact with any queries or questions or um, so I can help you um, with what you need. Thank you, Bev. Uh, so I'm Heather Jones and I'm the um, assi Interim Assistant Director um, in Greater Cambridge Shed Planning. Um, so you will remember uh, we've had uh, parish forums before and then very recently we did um, a survey which uh, Bev is going to share on the screen the results of it now. So we thought it was worth just spending a few minutes going through that survey. Um, our intention will be to repeat it again in 12 months time so you will have the opportunity to um, feedback again um, and whether you feel that, that you're getting the best benefit out of these um, um, sessions. So uh, Bev would you like to share the screen please? Great, thank you. Um, so we sent the survey out uh, on the 8th of June um, and we had a, sorry, a deadline of the 8th of June and we um, had, we sent out 102 and we had 19 um, parishes that returned uh, a response to that. Next slide, please. Uh, so we asked if you would like us to combine these meetings because they were separate and obviously um, that meant that effectively there was three of these every um, quarter, uh, which was quite resource hungry. So we asked if um, there was an opportunity to combine them and I think that um, the majority of people were, um, were happy with that. Next, next slide please. We also asked whether you would prefer them uh, in the morning or afternoon, and the majority preferred them in the afternoon, hence this timing. Next one, please. Um, so we did ask about whether we should hold them virtually or, um, or, or, or in person. And I think that the majority, again, uh, liked the fact that virtual, because lots of people can attend, um, and you can fit it in your day. 
Um, however, I think that we may well do a face to face at some point. So, um, but but I think the the main main sessions will be held um, uh, like this virtually, and we will record them, and the recordings will be available. So, if you can't make them, then obviously um, you can just revisit the recording at any point. Um, so we asked if you wanted themes because uh, we felt that we needed to have some structure to it. And I think there was a general consensus and a number of themes, uh, our agenda items were identified, such as end of year update, community engagement, et cetera. Um, so what we did was we selected two themes for this one, and this was done by, by Councillor Toomey and Councillor Katie, um, and we've, um, we were using trees uh, and the application process for trees and also compliance. So those are the two uh, for this session. Thank you. Um, then we asked about taking questions because obviously it can be difficult to have questions up front during the meeting and after as well um, because of resource time etc so what we've decided is um, in in uh, after looking at your responses is that we would um, have questions at the meeting and then we will prepare responses if we need to prepare a fuller response then we will come back to you after next one and then we asked did you want any other council services um, that you might feel that would be useful to come in um, and I think again planning enforcement or compliance as they're now known as um, was one of your top topics and trees so hence the start so we will talk about highways as well so talking to county about maybe getting highways um, to come along um, and it is your choice what the next um, session is around so if you've got any particular services or any particular Particular topics that you want us to take forward then we'll do that for you. Uh, next slide please. We did put a little question in there about the parish newsletter although we don't control that that is controlled by our um, central comms team um, and this uh, has been fed back to them so they are able to uh, make changes if, if they feel it was necessary but overall really positive response on that. And then we asked, um, was there anything else that we could do to improve these events moving forward? Um, and there's a couple of points there um, that we will obviously take into account. Next. So we did some recommendations, which was, to, and this is just a trial, so we can change this again. We will redo the survey probably around about next June, July time again uh, to coincide with the survey for this year and uh, we'll take on board your feedback. So uh, we've agreed to um, combine parishes together to hold three times a year um, virtually in the afternoon and record for circulation and then questions as we said on the day and we're going to ask themes so you can select themes for the next one um, and then allow some time for discussion as well so can we move on to i think that's it thank you bev so we have got um questions at the end we've got a 25 minute session so hopefully um that will allow, allow enough time for everybody to to um pose any questions but hopefully that was clear bev will circulate that to you all so you have a copy of it and you can review it yourselves and please do identify the next two topics that you want us to discuss and as i said we're very welcome to have feedback on it oh councillor anna thank you just a quick one I asked the question at the beginning of how many parishes were involved in this meeting and as you were talking and on the slides it became apparent that possibly in fact it's all the parishes are invited to this meeting have I understood that correctly you have yes okay that's great thank you thank you okay so uh let, let's move on I think to our, our main point um uh, um, or main session. So the first one is on trees. So hopefully you'll find this this useful. Um, I think we'll just swap that around slightly and we will put, um, um, I think, Adrian to talk first because he's he's the tree officer as he uh, introduced himself earlier. And then we'll do the, the presentation that Charlene has recorded. She's not able to make it, which is about the application process, just for information for you. So, Adrian, I'm going to hand over to you now, um, if that's OK. Thank you very much. Right. Uh, good evening. So. <clears throat> 
I've put together a, a presentation more so um, aimed at reintroducing of what uh, the planning trees services does. Um, so if I may share my screen. Can uh, someone just tell me if they can see the screen, the presentation? Thank you very much. Yes, we can. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so, so as the uh, title says, it's uh, an introduction to uh, South Council's plan and tree services. Um, and um, like I said at the beginning, I've been here for uh, five months now. So it's obviously still learning. It's still learning the actual district. And this is what uh, I thought it was necessary to re-engage with the parishes and to obviously introduce myself. So let's uh, move on. So who are we? So uh, we are a planning tree, uh, a trees team that uh, sits within the wider built natural environment team known as the BNE team. This is a side branch to the uh, planning services, uh, uh, which consult on planning matters. The planning, the planning trees team uh, consists of two members. Uh, it's myself, obviously the tree officer, and then there's the uh, tree officer assistant. So obviously my role is, uh, is the lead within the service as, as such, and that we're delivering a statutory planning tree services. And uh, the, tree, the tree officer assistant supports me uh, and um, and manages inquiries and assists with uh, delivering projects and um, looking at uh, background information. So what do we do? So roles within the planning tree team, the tree, uh, you know, with the tree officer myself and the tree officer assistant. Um, managing uh, statutory services uh, of a tree, tree protection. Its main, main focuses are uh, assessing and determining tree work applications. That's obviously uh, relates to uh, tree preservation orders, uh, works uh, TPO trees and trees within conservation areas. And um, uh, assess and making TPOs when deemed necessary. So when we'll get an inquiry, if it's possible to uh, uh, serve a TPO on the tree, if there's a, an emergency, so to speak. Um, and that's an area that we're still exploring and, um, uh, and ba based on past, uh, how it was past managed and how we want to move forward with it. Um, we obviously investigate unauthorized tree works uh, on protected tree, uh, onto protected trees. We uh, consult on planning applications, and then uh, we manage matters related to uh, hedgerow uh, uh, removal notices, which is under the Hedgerow Regulations Act. So extending beyond our statutory services, so this is, uh, and, and I hold, hold it passionate, it is obviously promoting good practice uh, of, um, as uh, stated within the slide, is uh, um, giving arboral cultural advice to the parish council, promoting arboral culture industry best, best practice, uh, promoting the importance of trees and, and, uh, and the benefits in the rural and uh, urban landscape, Strive to enhance and protect our Cambridgeshire tree canopy cover. Uh, tree relate, uh, relate, sorry, replacement planting conditions related to application. So that's in the sense with um, if we uh, get uh, an application related to a, a TPO tree being removed, uh, we would put a serve condition on that to, to, to make sure there's a new tree uh, replanted. And then we look um, in the next planting season to ensure it's been, uh, been carried out. And obviously we, we carry out research and development to statutory tree related projects within the service. Um, we serve, we serve, yeah, service review, improving um, customer service. So in other words, we're <laughs> behind the scenes, we look at how we are trying to deliver our customer service and um, uh, amend it accordingly and try and deliver a, a high standard. And then importantly, to help us to deliver what we're trying to do is we net, network within the industry organizations and neighboring authorities to see what the, what they're doing and, and what is out there so it i think it's important i thought it's a great opportunity i thought it's a, great, a good opportunity to uh, highlight some um, some matters that we don't um actually uh, have uh, manage or 
have control of because um, based on the inquiries we've had over the past, well, since I've been here for five, five months or so, is that there's almost um, a confusion or a misunderstanding that we have, uh, that we, we carry out certain aspects of tree management. But there are four areas you stated on, on the slide, um, managing tree maintenance or local authority tree stock. So, we don't have direct control of that um you know that's done elsewhere within uh south camps and then obviously you have highways as an authority and then the parish councils themselves so we don't have uh um yeah we're not committed or or in the sense of organizing tree work um so uh, advice on high hedges disputes related to antisocial behavior. Um, so what that means is in the sense of neighborly disputes when there's the land yard hedges, um, um, where, you know, where someone's unhappy. Um, sometimes we do get inquiries that to say that we, we should be investigating, but um, it doesn't fall within our remit. Um, so providing tree surgeon or tree consultancy co uh, company recommendations, um, it's it's just worth mentioning that um yeah we're not obviously we can't um give um company details out because it could be seen of promoting a bit uh, businesses so what we do is we we direct customers uh, and res residents uh, and uh, parish members um to go to the Ar associate arbor cultural arbor cultural association um because it has a list of accredited um um, tree surgeons or tree consultancies. Um, yes, and we don't uh, obviously complete tree work applications on behalf of customers. We obviously help and advise and, uh, and the best way to um, say, uh, uh, fill out um, a tree works application to a, a you know, TPO or 211 notification in respect to conservation, trees and conservation areas, but we certainly aren't in the position to uh, complete them on behalf of people. So our, our, the website uh, within the tree section is uh, there's, uh, there, there's multiple questions which have been kind of put together, I think on a, his, a historic um, 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 uh, building on the relationship of trying to manage people's inquiries. And there's a, the, the list that you can see uh, are a few and um, within the website, uh, there are drop downs to give you an answer underneath these these um, these questions, which I'll hopefully will show you uh, when I give you um, a tour of of the South Cam's website where you can find the tree information. So, so leading on to that, this so I'm gonna now, if this will work. So bear with me. I'm gonna link to the website. Just loading, see what happens. Here we go. Can everyone still see the screen? Yes, we can. Fantastic. So obviously the home, home screen, South Cam's website. Um, now, where the tree information is, is within the climate emergency and nature. So we will click in, into that, it lead you down to the next page and then from here they will see there's a there's more options to choose from and we sit in the nature and biodiversity so it's bottom right uh we we'll click into there and then there's two more headings and then slowly drilling down, we'll go into trees and hedges. And then we'll start seeing um, these options. We'll have hedgerows and hedges, high hedges, uh, trees and around my property, trees and conservation areas, tree preservation order, tree warden, uh, building next to near existing trees, protected trees. So, each one you can you can see um, is is a specific area. 
Um, I think it's important. I, I don't think it's necessary to go into every single one of them, but I think it's important to uh, start with, obviously, to my mind, the tree conservation and tree preservation order. So if I click on trees in the conservation area, we it is you'll see a plethora of information, and then underneath are relative questions which then gives you further information and links, helpful links of where, um, of where to go to, or in this, ca in, in this case, to uh, um, fill out an application form. And then further down, there are many other questions, but all very much related. Uh, this one's quite important in the sense I have an emergency. What can what can I do? It gives some direction on that, and obviously it gives a link to the Arboreal Cultural Association where you can find an approved contractor. And now if we went back and go into TPOs, Cheap Tree Preservation Order, it gives you information what a, a tree preservation order is and what type of trees uh, uh, can be TPO'd. You can open this up and there it goes. It, go, it, it goes into more depth and explaining the species, um, uh, the type of ornamental value to it, the fruit, you know, as it says itself, fruit, parkland, woodland and forest and so on. And then, then crucially, this is obviously you know the, the questions in there. How do I apply to undertake some some work? And then you'll it, there's a, a a link to um, the application, which is in planning portal. And then, currently, in respect to uh, requesting a new TPO there is a drop down under the question and there is a link um, directly to an e-form where you can request the uh, um, um, uh, TPO um, application. Um, uh, this is a, so can a hedgerow be TPO? It is, uh, believe it or not, is an inquiry we receive quite frequently. And it, the bottom line is, 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 uh, is it's not eligible because of the hedgerow, but it expands on there of, of why the reasons, and then there's a link. Now, that's a whistle stop tour of our website. And I hope it is useful um, and appreciate it's quite long winded how to get to here. And I, I, and I think there is some uh, a long term project to over um, to, to, to um, renew how it is actually looked into but i think there's time just to go over the application process is uh, once uh, you submit an application it through the planning portal it then goes to our um, tso team uh, which uh, assess and validate uh, behind the scenes really and then they come to us um, and we start assessing and then making the determination on them. Um, and in respect to TPOs, uh, there's, uh, you know, it's a mandatory eight week uh, period. And then uh, for 211s as conservation areas, it's six week as under a notification. So there's a six week notice uh, period. It gives us the opportunity to, mm. um, to uh, investigate and assess. Um, so that's that's that done. I'm happy to, yeah, I think, yeah, stop sharing my screen. There's, there's some um, there's some questions in the chat, actually, which yeah. you, you might find useful to show yeah, no, on, please. on the yeah, website. Yeah. <laughs> do you, do you, um, do you want me to, to call them out so you? Would that I'm be happy, easier yeah. for you? Yeah. Okay. Thank okay. You. So um, we've got Mandy Pink from Over 
says, how do you determine which trees need protecting and what do you do if works are carried out without approval? You cannot glue the tree branches <laughs> back on. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, and, uh, you know, how can you contact the tree assistant and who is this? So, <laughs> <laughs> Yes, <laughs> so there's uh, the, the details are on the web site but I think I think it's probably important to say that after um, after this forum um, for parish clerks or, or, or councillors to contact us or we can send out kind of like contact links so it's because it's still we're still in a new kind of um, process of, um, of of contacting I think when I started I sent out like a, a, a generic email to all parishes to say introducing myself so there's there should be an email in majority of the parishes um, inbox in the sense of my of my details how they can uh, contact us um you know um so what's so go, the first question was uh how how can we what, what um determine the tree's um value of being tpo'd um i, I think it's important to highlight that trees within a conservation area already under a a level of protection so we 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 don't we don't try to focus on them too they don't we don't really prioritize on them too much unless there's a threat to them but trees that are just don't have any level of protection the the that current guidance is that uh um and it's on our website is do you believe the tree is of importance um and is it at immediate risk of uh, you know, literally being cut down. You've heard something, or yeah. Um, but it is it is worth letting us know. Uh, but there is a criteria it, it, it's uh, set against, which is again um, in the um, in the website. So whoever is interested in the sense of possibly considering um, putting a TPO application in, and um, for, for you know for a new TPO, is to contact us, and we'll. Uh, um, can just give more guidance on that. Okay, <clears throat> so next question. Dennis Payne has asked who manages South Cam's trees dock? So I'm not quite sure, do we mean trees with TPOs or do we mean trees um, that are situated on South Cam's land? So maybe uh, South Cam's council land. So maybe we answer both. <laughs> so yeah, yeah. So TPOs, uh, uh, um, in a sense, uh, uh, are within planning within the tree, the planning trees team um, in this, uh, of 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 uh, assessing um, determining any um, tree works application to them, but in a sense of of as like I try to put across in the in the slideshow is that we don't have any uh, responsibility for the management, so therefore it would sit within. Um, uh, um, now, bear with me on this. It's either like housing or estates. It's an area which I, I'm still trying to, which I believe I just need to just confirm on. But um, yeah, there there is a housing and an estates kind of ma management team that overlook it. Okay, cool. Um, so Laura Lawrence has asked, how can we find out which trees in our parishes have TPOs? Uh, that's a that's a really good question because we do get that inquiry a lot and even by members of public um it, again in our website on the south Cam's website there is a interactive tpo conservation map um and uh, everyone can access it uh and it shows you all you've got to do is put your address it, address into it and it obviously will um, scan to, you know, drill down to your uh, to that location and you'll see the uh, colour coded areas which are um, you know, um, 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 outlined in other TPO or conservation areas. So that's the best way to do it. And then if there are still any other inquir um, queries about it, it's to obviously get in touch with us and, uh, it, 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 and so we can um, hopefully give some more guidance on that. Good, thank you. Uh, Mandy Pink from Over says, how much emphasis do you place on residents' comments when a PC puts in an application for tree works? Um, in, in what respect? Um, so Maybe Mandy wants to add to that. Is she on the call? 
she's there. Mandy, are you oh, yeah, able sorry. to expand? <laughs> Thank yeah, you. Sorry, Adrian. Um, if a parish council puts in an application um, and there are lots of um, comments from residents going, oh, you can't work to that tree, um, how much emphasis do you put on a, the work the parish council wants to do and the residents' comments? Oh, well, well no, no, that's a good question. It's, uh, so we, uh, our assessment is based on what the application states. Uh, you know, we, we take in consideration the, um, uh, the, the, the level of protection, if it's just conservation or, or a TPO, and then what work is being proposed firstly and then we'll look at uh, if there are any uh, you know objections to that and um, it, it, it boils down to if the work is reasonable is it, is it justified and then uh, because within our within our service that's what we we would base it on and obviously we do uh, you know take into consider uh, consideration of 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 um, of comments towards the works um, um, but normally it is, is, is governed by uh, what is being asked. Is that, is that, does that answer the question? Yes, thank you, Adrian. That's great. No problem. Uh, Councillor Anna, I think I missed, I swapped these around. I'm so sorry. Councillor Anna said, if I see a lot of trees being cut down unexpectedly, who should I contact? It feels like an emergency just to know if these trees are protected or not. Yeah, good question. Yeah, it's or, or, yeah, it's good to yeah, it's best to to, to um, contact us and to see uh, if the trees are so we can look in to see if the trees are protected. But if they're not, this is this is so this is frustrating in in our respect is that obviously because we we we've got limitations. Some trees aren't protected, so and the landowner can just uh, go ahead and carry out the works without uh, uh, notifying anybody, and it is alarming. Um, um, especially when we're trying to uh, retain and enhance our tree uh, canopy cover in South Cams, uh, and uh, one, obviously, as as already mentioned, once the works is, is started or done, it's too late. Um, so, really, the emphasis is on on knowing if it's an area of protection or if there's ever um, like an advantage of knowing that work's going to be carried out. Then it's always best to try and contact us and see what we can do but we are limited in the sense uh with trees that aren't don't have any level of protection can i come back on that heather yeah certainly just briefly um so uh are you in the position where you can issue an emergency um tree preservation order just so that you can explore whether a tree does need to be protect, protected or not just to just to sort of to halt the work yeah temporary. yeah so no uh, it's a good question yeah because if no work has been carried out whatsoever and there's enough time for us to react to it so you know you, you you've heard that in a, in a week's time on a month's time there's a tree load of tree work's going to be carried out on trees that are not protected whatsoever and you think there are um um, you know, they are value uh, and they have their benefits and so forth, and they meet a criteria that what we use, well, which is, is, is gener generic, generically used, then we will um, we'll, we'll do our best and make the assessment and, and, make, and, make, and see if it works, see if they're worthy of the TPO. But yeah, we can, in some cases, I think in the past it has been done to put a provisional on but then the outcome to allow that obviously extra time to see uh, if they're worthy of a, of a TPO. Okay, thank you. Um, so Kate, uh, if there is a TPO tree that looks as if it's struggling, so I'm assuming that means it doesn't look well, <laughs> what can we Tree Warden Parish Council do? Uh, it, again, it's um, uh, contacting, uh, an, you know, an approved arborist uh, who, who can give you advice on that. Um, and at the same time, I'd like to think that we we can do the same thing. But again, our, our workload, is, you know, you know, it ties us down to being able to fully commit to things like this. But again, like I said, I'm very new to post, and my ambition is to engage the parish councils uh, to help. 
uh, in in those situations where a protected tree, you think a tree that uh, is a, a TPO tree is is under stress, is in decline. What could the advice be? But, but the bottom line is at the moment is to go to a uh, um, a tree consultant, a, a respected tree surgeon, and they should be able to give you that advice. And then it then to move forward, let's say if any works need to be carried out. Um, especially in this the, the 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 climate we're in right now with the extreme weathers, we're going to see a lot of trees that are going to be looking stressed and, and and quite sad, really. Okay, thank you. Um, Councillor Toomey has said that just a reminder: you can send in reports or questions. Um, obviously, look at the website on planning trees at southcams.gov.uk. Um, we've got Councillor uh, Elaine who says, in the situation when a tree with a TPO becomes a danger to the public and needs felling, and this happens either after the hours of nine to five or at the weekend, what should we do? Um, if, it's, um, if it's believed to be an emergency, then there's such thing as a five day notice. Uh, so uh, so that's, that's, that gives, let's that say hypothetically, there was a TPO tree uh, sustain some storm damage, there's uh, lost a significant uh, limb um, over a road or footpath, um, you know, the work, uh, the, 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 the first and foremost, again, is getting the contractor in um, and they'll make the assessment, get the works tidied up, but it, notifying us, it will be under a five day notice and that's through an email just to say, um, uh, you know, this tree, the location, the, what's happened, the reason, uh, and then we'll uh, start the process of issuing a five-day notice. Um, but if, it, but again, um, we're here uh, to give that advice um, if it's necessary. Some, because some cases on under a five-day notice, um, you know, they're 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 not they're a bit gray in the sense because some people take advantage of a five-day notice just to get tree work done whereas a five five-day notice is there for emergency reasons for for just for, for that just like that question uh, and i think this is a, a kind of related so councillor anna has asked tree works often happen at the weekends and evenings or otherwise out of hours how do we contact scdc for advice if we see trees being cut down no, that's a good question. Um, it, we, you know, we we don't have an out an out of hours service, and we, we're not, you know, um, so it's it's try it's emailing us a, a, to let us know, and so we can pick it up the next uh, you know next working day, so to speak, and then we'll investigate from there. Okay, thank you. Um, so I think that's all the questions, Adrian. I, I found that really interesting. So thank you. And uh, it's good to know that the website has been reviewed so we don't have to do quite so much drilling down. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm assuming you could put trees in the search and, and it would come up anyway. So um, yes. Uh, yeah. yeah. So, um, so so that's good to know. Um, and, and, and I believe as well that you're also doing some comms with our new comms and engagement um, uh, officer, so so there will be co communications coming out to to the parishes. So uh, look out for that, and hopefully you'll find that helpful. And now you know who Adrian is, you can contact him directly. Um, okay, thanks very much, Adrian. Um, so we've got um, Adrian touched upon the tree process there. So that was great so the application process so we have got a little video from Charlene and that's to show you um, um, just how an application can be processed on the system I think so which is helpful it's also helpful for us so I just wanted you to kind of understand that we're trying to um, help um, people to, to use the planning portal for applications. Um, it's free for a tree uh, application. Um, and, the, and the point is that if we do that, it will go directly into our um, back office system, which will save us time. So it's really important, but, you know, time is, is of a premium. We want to give a really good service. So if we can do these little changes that help us to save time, then it's it's really fantastic. So um, just by encouraging people to use Planning Portal uh, to put their tree applications on, then it will actually go directly um, into our back office system. So that saves, as I said, a lot, um, a lot of work for an officer or a, a technical support officer 
officer. So we would appreciate your support in promoting this as well. So um, Bev's got the video, I think. She's going to share it and hopefully it will work. I can't hear it, Bev. Can Is anyone it, else? No, I can't hear it either. Um, is it something about sharing the video where you have to say um, that you want the sound to be available too? Bear with me, everyone. Bearing with you, Bev, don't worry. Thank you. If it doesn't work, we can certainly circulate it and um, hopefully people can just, um, and just access it that way. But we'll give it another go. Okay, let me just try it then. Um, where do I have to? Beverly, I think it's on your three dots. Oh, right. Thank you, Anna. Um, share sound. That's it. Shall we try it now, shall we, people? Right, here we go. Years we have been extremely busy. Uh, early in the year, we were very busy where we received um, in one week alone 245 applications. Um, that so far has been our highest this year. Uh, thankfully, things have slowed down a little bit, but we are still on average receiving about 160 applications per week, so we're still very, very busy. With that in mind, I wanted to uh, do a small presentation on what we're looking at doing to change and uh, manage the number of applications that we have uh, submitted to us. Um, if you bear with me, I'll just share my screen so I can do the presentation. Okay, so um, what um or what we're looking at doing is moving so that all planning applications are submitted via planning portal. So in 2021, we received 8,289 applications. 86% of those applications were received via planning portal, 12 via email, one via post. We already receive, as you can see, quite a few applications via the planning portal so I want to move it forward where we receive all our applications um, via the planning portal. With the planning portal that offers many benefits for their users so with this uh, you can attach documents and revisit an application before completing your submission. This is really useful and can really benefit agents so that they can put all the information on as they're building up the application. It can be straight in there and then they can see it uh, fully in their system meaning that they don't need to store it in on their own work laptop PC. Um, planning Portal also offers the ability to buy a planning map. So for people that haven't got architects or um, don't have that facility, they're able to, to buy a map to support the application. Um, they also offer step-by-step -step help and advice uh, as long uh, as long as uh, as well as interactive guidance to um, explain planning. So this really allows people who um, don't understand planning, um, whether they need planning permission or not, it gives them the ability to find out the information that they need. Um, planning Portal also offer a dedicated custom support team to help them through this process in actually submitting an application through to their local authority. All the information I've, I've given a link on um, how applications are done, but obviously the website offers lots and, uh, of different advice within there. 
why why the change um i've done a flow diagram here to show what uh, it takes for myself and my team to do in processing an application um, to the point of just getting it through to my validators. Um, so if somebody submits an application via the planning portal, all the documents are there, payment is taken, that is then submitted to us via our OneApp connector. Uh, this automatically creates um, a uniform application. So that's straight into our system. It lets us know what the fee is. And it also puts all the documents that is related to that application in our document download uh, folder ready for us to index the documents into our document system which we call the DMS. So the first time that one of my colleagues will actually touch that is when they come to index them documents. All the other information has already been put in the system for us. Now if we receive that same application but via email First of all, that comes into um, our planning uh, application uh, email accounts, our inbox. We then have to take that application, confirm that it is an application and um, it is then moved into our applications to log folder where we will then create a folder in our download folder to put all the documents in there and then we will create a basic application record within Uniform. And then we will look at downloading them documents into our DMS uh, ready to uh, start the validation process. Again, if we receive that same application via post, um, it's either received by uh, City Council or South Cams, depending on uh, which uh, postal address the customer has used. We then have to take them documents, we have to scan them onto our system, we then email them to our plan inbox so that it can go through the same process as if it had been sent in via email. The last two, the email and the post option, as you can see, are quite manual processes. It requires a lot of work from an individual to get it to the stage where if it had been submitted by planning portal, the first time we touch it is when we're indexing the documents. This will be a great time saver for technical support, meaning that we can actually spend more time in getting that validation uh, correct and applications through our system faster. The benefits for this change is that when applicants um, have completed all the necessary documents and payments have taken, they, up until that point, their application sits in the planning portal system, so they will only get sent to us when they are ready to submit and they have made final payment. So we get all the information in one hit. Um, it's loaded directly into our uniform system, which removes the need for us to manually enter a new application into our system. It also removes the need for us to check for payments. Um, if we have an application and we're waiting on payment it's we're constantly going back to check whether that customer has made that payment so it can delay the process whereas if they've done it via planning portal we know we've got that payment straight there it also allows us to have a consistent approach so we can support our customers giving them the correct advice and knowing where within the process they are um, Application forms are also given to us via planning portal with a redacted copy, so it removes the need for us to have to uh, remove uh, personal data before it's uh, published on public access. Customers and agents will no longer need to call our customer service team to take payments over the phone. As they're taking payment, they can submit a plan and application any time, day or night. Uh, whereas at the moment, if they do it via email, they will receive the email. They have to call our customer service team um, and are restricted by our opening hours. And actually, the whole process, we can just remove the manual processes out of this, saving um, time 
in the technical support team, meaning that we can actually support our customers in a better way uh, and allowing that consistent approach and um, ability to uh, validate applications quicker. Moving on from that, something that we've recently changed that some of you may have noticed when um, going on to public access is our neighbour notification. So what we used to do is just do a list of uh, notified neighbours. So we would have um, a copy of the neighbour consultation letter and then below that a list of all the neighbours that we had notified. As you can see on the left hand side that's exactly what it looks like. Now for all new applications we're using a notified neighbours map. What this is doing is highlighting which neighbours we've actually notified. So on the right hand side you will see that we've got the red outline of the address of the application and then the grayed out areas of the um, land or properties that are adjacent to the application. Below this map is again the same list um, of notified neighbours so that you've got two versions on that. Um, we think this is a much more visual representation and easier to understand which neighbours have actually been notified regarding uh, an application. Uh, hopefully you'll find this uh, useful. I know uh, certainly our case officers have found it much more useful than just uh, the list that was currently there. Um, I just want to say uh, Again, thank you. And obviously, if you've got any questions, uh, I know we'll be taking them uh, at the end uh, of the evening. Um, please don't hesitate me if you've got any questions or queries. OK, thank you very much for your time. Bye bye. Thank you, um, Bev. That that's um, great. Uh, so I think we have a couple of questions or comments. So, okay, um, we have uh, some parishes of age populations who tend to also have old trees in their gardens. I hope you will still accept postal applications. Can you state that this will not be totally automated or this will alienate a lot of residents? Will you accept applications made on behalf of residents who are not able to access computers? Absolutely. So what we're saying is if someone um, has access to a computer, then we're encouraging them to use the planning portal way of submitting the applications. Um, but however, as you will see, there is still around 1% that we get through postal, um, and that is absolutely acceptable if people um, do not have the ability to, to use a computer. Um, so that will still be open for people. It's just the manner of the applications coming in. So rather than them using email or any other, you know, by sending it direct to an officer, it is much better if we can get them to use the planning portal system. Um, how do we find the planning portal? And is this to be used as if parish wants to make an application for a TPO? Absolutely, we will send you the link after. So uh, that's from Councillor Anna, and we will send that out um, with the presentation notes so that you will get that and everybody will get access to that link. Um, um, but if you just type in planning portal, it does come up. Um, Laura, I understood the parish councils are charged 50% of the standard fee for applications they make. If that is correct, I couldn't see on the portal how to request this when submitting an application for our recre recreation ground. Um, I will have to look into that. I don't know that there is a discount for parish councils, so I will need to, um, to investigate that, Laura, and we'll come back to you on that one. Um, and then Hazel, uh, you say GCSP indexes the files. Does this mean that a local person puts in the address or is that done by the applicant? I'm concerned that someone needs to check the words that we might, that we might want to search on later. I've seen misspelt road names, et cetera, which wouldn't be possible later. Um, so when people submit the application, there is the facility to um, uh, find the address. Um, all of our addresses should be um, 
on what's called um, a, a national gazetteer or a local gazetteer. So we use the same address um, or we should use the same address um, and then that should be standardised across. So that's how it should work. And again, we'll put some more details in. Um, I can see times marching on and I know you'll probably be very interested to hear about compliance. So, so I hope that was great. We had a really good from uh, from Charlene. That was Charlene Harper, um, who is our manager of the technical support team. And again, any queries, you can contact her. So um, over to John now. So if we can ask John to do his presentation. So it was um, enforcement. We've now rebranded this as compliance. There will be information coming out on this but John I'm sure it will talk very ably about his role and what he does within the council for us over to you John thank you thank you very much I don't know Bev if you've got the uh, link to the page and whether you can bring up the page at all uh, just for the greater shared planning yeah yeah just bear with me a minute fantastic so while Bev is doing that I'd like to thank you all first of all for voting enforcement as your number one topic that you want to talk about. It's reassuring to know that we are as popular as, as ever. Uh, back in February, when we had this meeting last time, uh, I gave a presentation to you all on, on what we did and you know what we could do and what we couldn't do. And we got initial feedback that some people thought that it was a bit lecturing, it was a bit preachy, a bit hectoring. I, I take that in, I uh, recognise all that feedback and I can only uh, apologise for this. Uh, this is the nature of enforcement or compliance, unfortunately, delivering bad news to uh, one of the people that you might be in the middle of an argument with. Uh, we can never, ever uh, satisfy everybody's uh, wants and needs. So I can really apologise for that. Uh, so I'm going to focus on a number of operational changes since we last spoke to you that have already occurred and some that will be occurring in the near future. Uh, now, following a service review and the, uh, taking part in the uh, South Kansas District Council transformation uh, program, uh, there's a number of uh, changes that have occurred. Number one, the name. So we are no longer enforcement. We are now team planning compliance. So we are the compliance team, which you can't see, but if you could do that, would have been fun. Uh, so what we've done with part of the service review, we have undertaken a benchmarking exercise with lots of other uh, local authority um, uh, enforcement teams uh, uh, around England. And a number of them uh, have their own teams that have already rebranded and call themselves compliance. Some others don't have teams at all actually and have to rely on normal planning officers going out and doing the enforcement work as and when it comes in. Um, so South Kansas in the city, um, you know, does does have its you know its elevated decision of actually having dedicated officers to deal with the enforcement and compliance matters. Now, why compliance? Why not enforcement anymore? Some people might say, well, you didn't do any enforcement in the first place, John. So you might as well change your name to something else. Well, the nature of enforcement in the planning system is actually it's not, you know, it's not prescriptive. It's all about compliance. A lot of questions we get asked about say, why do you let people put in retrospective planning applications, John? Because unfortunately, the national planning legislation allows that to happen. So I appreciate that lots and lots of people will go and do stuff without permission. It might start off as being under permitted development that allows you to do so much, uh, but then it might all morph into something else or they might change their land to, to something else. Uh, unfortunately, there are, well, you know, there are one or two uh, instances of uh, unlawful planning acts, which are uh, criminal acts straight away. However, uh, a lot of it can actually be either put back to how it was before without any action taken, or people can apply for retrospective permission. And they can actually, unfortunately, also apply for retrospective permission even when we serve an enforcement notice. That is one of the grounds of appeal, that if we serve an enforcement notice, they can actually appeal under ground A, which is the ground that whatever they have done should be got planning permission. So that is the reason why we are calling it compliance. So we'll, uh, we'll go forward to that. Uh, another change is that we are having dedicated area officers beforehand. Uh, a team of six was basically there were some officers dealing with all the South Cams and driving all over the place. And there are some officers dealing purely in the city. 
Well, what we've gone and done, we've gone and basically designated uh, parishes, uh, and that, a list of parishes and a list of uh, city ward officers. And so each area of the district and each parish has its own dedicated area officer. So that person, you know, that identity will be known to you. So if you know it's a problem, not only can you come to the team as a whole, but you should have a good idea of the name and the identity and the contact details of who the area officer is. Um, sorry, can I just point out that we're still seeing your first slide? We, uh, okay. It hasn't changed, is that right? Uh, that's fine. Yes. No, no, that's fine. Okay. Unfortunately, I, I'm talking to you. I can't really give any more. Uh, <laughs> that's fine, Anna. Uh, Did, if, you mentioned the different areas and I, I thought you were showing a map. That's all. Sorry. No, no, that's fine. Uh, no, no, that's safe. Uh, I don't know if uh, we will come on to that. What we will do, we will put up a list uh, in due course of what area areas each officer covers and their contact details. Um, but you're looking at the, the new web page at the moment. Uh, there is a video on there. Now we are pressed for time, so I'm not going to ask Bev to play for it simply because I think that uh, it might be a bit of a struggle to actually get the sound on it because it's all about talking really. But do have a look at the web page. There is a video there. It's very good. It's three minutes long. It basically says what is planning control and deals what is planning control. It's really, really good and actually um, the information on that video is mostly laid down on the next paragraph on uh, the web page entitled What is a Breach of Planning Control? Thank you very much, Bev. Uh, so that basically lists uh, on what is a breach of planning control. So there's lots of information on there. I'll tell you what, if we just carry on scrolling down through the web page, why we've got the opportunity, it also lists what isn't a breach as well. And what's actually really handy, uh, we actually signpost uh, places for parishes to go to as to basically, just, you know, if it's decided that it's not a breach, we've actually got some links where to go for environmental health at South Cairns and at the city and also to the county council where it is a highways matter. And again, there's more links down to there like how to go to the environmental health team uh, at South Cairns as well. And also, most importantly, sometimes uh, building control would have to go to. Um, uh, and then there's just like how to raise a complaint. This is quite important. What we're now asking to uh, everyone to do is to basically, we have no dedicated admin. Up to this point, the service review showed that a lot of our investigation officers were spending a lot of time actually doing admin char uh, stuff and actually instead of going out and investigating. So what we're trying to do is to get make that as automated as possible. So we are basically, we are closing down our email box uh, very shortly. So how the online form, which you can access there, that will give you the opportunity for you to put in all the information that you want to make regarding uh, your, your complaint. And you can upload photos on there. You can upload other documents, anything that you like. And that will automatically come through to an officer to verify that information. And it will go to that dedicated area officer you will then get a feedback bounce back email with a reference number saying thank you very much for your information. Uh, you'll have the officer's details on it, email and contact details on it as well. So they'll all be automated. Once you've got that information, you are then able and free and you have the power to know who your officer is, that the details that you submitted has actually been looked at and verified and that it is actually sitting with the officer who has a number of days to go out and investigate that complaint and that allegation. If you feel that, you know, we need more information, we could come back to you. Uh, okay, if we, uh, Bev, if we can just go down quickly and have a bit more. So these are the uh, priority cases. So at the moment, uh, our aim is to carry out an initial site visit with five day, within five days of getting the complaint. Higher priority cases, uh, obviously uh, are done. And the question I think has just come up is to, you know, will you be dealing with old and existing cases? Uh, yes, we will. We're obviously, something's coming that's old and has not been looked at, that will obviously be dealt with first. Uh, and then we will go, uh, start, we will look at stuff that comes in as well. So for example, if you complete, if you are sending some information on Monday 
and an offer of service going out to look at a site on Wednesday, then they may well go out on site to look at your uh, allegation on the Wednesday, along with any other information for any other complaints in that area that they received on Tuesday as well. So the idea is um, that, uh, that, you know, it's all done, all, all the work is done as quickly and efficiently as possible. Um, so there it all sets out where it's medium cases or where it's medium priority, we'll do those within 10 days, and then low priority is 14 days, and then afterwards, we will come back and give you an update of what we found and what we are doing. Um, so that is the e-form for the second and the fact that the, for in the future you won't be able to use the inbox uh, for much longer. Uh, there's also at the bottom, we're going to have a link to the new digital public register. That is going to be coming into effect uh, next month. So what does that mean? So basically, if you want to know whether if you're thinking of buying a house or if you want to see whether your neighbour has had an enforcement notice served on their property, you can type in the address and you can find out the enforcement details to see whether there's an enforcement notice or any other formal notices on there. And uh, we also uh, will be releasing a new planning uh, enforcement policy that is coming out in two months. This is basically going to be set out saying what our service standards out are and basically creating all the parameters as to when or we uh, when we can't take enforcement action and basically how the process all works. Um, just let you know that for the last few months, you might have had on occasion uh, not receive any, uh, any uh, kind of just come back to you, feedback come back straight away. Unfortunately, we have been two officers down for a number of months. The good news is that we have got a new team and lead enforcement officer who will be starting uh, we're in at the start of January 2023, so we're looking forward to that, to having an extra officer here. And there has been a, so a, also uh, a vacancy for a senior officer, one of these area officers, uh, for the last few months. That one right now can say he's been filled by, by an officer and someone will be starting in the next month or so regarding that. So we will have, uh, fingers crossed, uh, by, uh, from the next start of next year, we'll have a full complement of staff that will be able to work on the team. Uh, we understand and we do appreciate that enforcement is seen as a priority as regard to and part of the big council's planning service and we're trying our best basically to see ways of how we can deal with cases more efficiently how to prioritize, prioritize stuff better how to keep you more in the loop and give you better feedback so uh, what i'm going to do i'm going to stop there for the moment i'm sure there's going to be lots of questions coming so i'll take those now thank you very much for listening so there is questions in the chat, John. So um, I, as you would expect, so I'll go through. Thank you for that. That was really helpful to give us an update. What John hasn't said is how much effort the team have put into this. So I want to thank them. They've been fantastic in helping to transform and um, move, you know, channel shift people. Um, the more that we can get people to use that online form, then then the more that time that will allow John and the rest of the team to work on, on the nitty gritty of the compliance and enforcement cases. So please help us to support that. That's our ask for, um, for, for you. Um, OK, so I think we have. Um, so let me just check that I've not missed any. So we've got um, Mandy Pink from over. Why are there still some enforcement cases that have been around for many years? When will you actually make a decision? <laughs> <laughs> that's interesting because I think well, that's a very good question, Mandy, simply because enforcement is very, very complex. So you may well have some cases where we served the notice and basically it's gone to appeal and then we're basically then that might take a year year and a half simply because in enforcement process appeal process some crimes can take a matter of 12 months just to even to be heard and for that cycle to be done you then when you serve the enforcement notice and, the, and then you have the appeal you only start the compliance period once the decision has come out of the appeal. So you could serve a notice on day one, day 500, you finally get a decision back from the planning inspector about appeal. You then go back to day one where if someone's got 12 months to deal with whatever needs to be done, that's why it sits around there for ages. I will hold my hands up and say there are a number of cases where people simply haven't complied with enforcement notices and the various reasons uh, we uh, are uh, taking our time in uh, prosecuting them 
Uh, that's simply a matter of resource. It's also a matter of the fact that the criminal justice system is currently in a massive backlog and it can take six months even to just to get a spare court date to hear a planning enforcement case. So that's just something to be, um, be aware of. And that is why compliance is actually something that we try to go down because if you can get a deal with a matter straight away or in a relatively short amount of time, then it can be seen as a lot better in cases where there's less harm of getting it done as soon as getting it dealt with as soon as possible, rather than going down a formal compliance route, which may take a lot longer. Um, and so that's the so that's the case. The only other reason why something might be sitting around is because we've invited a retrospective application, and the application is actually taking ages to be determined. Um, so um, those are the reasons, Mandy, but thank you. Okay, uh, so Libby White has said, if we don't know the area officer, how do we find out? Okay, Libby, well, first of all, we, we would say, and if we are directing everyone to the inquiry form, online create inquiry form everywhere. Once you fill that in, that feeds into the computer. The computer churns out the details of your case officer. Et voila, you have the, the case officer. Okay, but I'm sure that that's one of the reason we want to try and do that is to basically try and regulate everyone going down that route so people receive less emails uh, and yet for initial complaints. I know, I know people, you know, people might want a shortcut. I do appreciate that. But I've even told Liz Watts that I want her to go down this route of filling in the form rather than emailing me. So if it's good enough for Liz, then hopefully it's good enough for everyone else, but we'll see how long that lasts for. I think we just want to point out that helps to save you on administration time and wasted um, sort of chasing really. So because that system will give you feedback as John has pointed out, it automatically goes into our system and creates the case and you will automatically be told who your case officer is. So that does save us a lot of time. So, um, okay, uh, Mandy again, Mandy from Pink, uh, Mandy Pink from Over, sorry. <laughs> are you are you prioritizing his historic cases and is there a timeline that you should be working to? I think you kind of answered this already, John, but you might just want to add to that. Uh, no, so Lavanda, yes, where we've got existing cases, uh, it is very, you know, we, we, need, we need more time. We need to be better efficient. We're trying to create processes whereby, and we have now done, where we have set up systems systems like enterprise which are back office systems and what they do mandy they basically continuously nag officers and remind them to say hey you've got an outstanding case about this you need to deal with this or you need to send out a letter by this or you need to contact someone about this by a certain time and so they're really really helpful about i mean officers have a continuing varied and your know, extensive caseload and sometimes it can you can get lost as an officer into what to, what to do next and so actually these improvements, these different ways of working are actually trying to make us more efficient so that we don't forget about any old existing cases. And, and again, I think there's a lot of information on the website, so please do have a look at it. It's some really great stuff that the team have worked on there as well. Um, this is Kate who said, uh, I think this is one that needs to be taken offline. So she's just watched a plot of amenity land on Dolphin Close in Linton Cell for 43,000. And the deeds of the property seem to imply the land should remain as amenity land in prep. I can't say the word perpetuity. So the original development started in 1972. Do you still hold records of developments, including discharge of all conditions of this age? And if so, how can we access them in a hurry? I have lots more info and we'd be happy to take this offline if appropriate. Okay, so I think that one needs to be offline, but there is information on, um, on our uh, public access. There's a lot of planning information on there that you will find. Um, so we do keep it, we do retain it. John, do you want to just add to that? Yeah, well, you um, agree with everything you're saying. Well, I would say I heard the word deeds, and if that is relating to the deeds on the land registry title, then that is a civil matter and it wouldn't be a planning enforcement issue. We cannot enforce or can deal with compliance relating to anything that is on land registry saying. So unfortunately, that is something which you'd have to get an independent solicitor involved with, unfortunately. But okay. we can look at stuff involving conditions. 
Okay, lovely. Uh, Councillor Anna has made a really good point here. Uh, we've got how to raise a complaint um, on the actual website when we are asking the people to fill in the form. And it does sound as if we're complaining about an officer, which we don't want. So wouldn't it be better to signpost to say how to raise a concern? So we'll take that back and on board, Anna, because I do agree. I think I think you were right. I noticed that as I was going down. I was like, oh. <laughs> Uh, Mandy Pink has come back again, um, but this is, I think you've already dealt with this about cases that may be 20 years older and when will they be dealt with. I do know you're going through historic cases now, John, aren't you? So um, we are progressing as, as best as we can. And uh, we do have a new manager starting with us in January. So that will be fantastic. And also uh, additional resource starting, I think, next week. So that's great. Um, yeah, so Hazel, Hazel Smith has said, in the past, there has been a risk-based approach and some issues that we think are important were put into the too difficult pile. Will you be able to look again at these? Uh, yeah, but I love the too difficult pile. That's the stuff that basically gets the juices flowing, if I'm, I'm honest. Uh, there is no such thing as a too difficult pile, to be honest. Uh, what we will be doing moving forward is having monthly case reviews on all cases. Um, um, I'll leave it at that, that for the moment. Yeah, okay. I think, and I think there is something about um, expediency, isn't there, which again is, is highlighted. It is on the, it's on the website if you have a look, uh, because it's something about public interest tests. So, yes. okay. Um, Sally Ann Harter said, will the term compliance be used moving forward as a compliance order or will it remain as enforcement? That is a fantastic question. Uh, so compliance is a branding rather than a kind of legal term. So if you are unfortunately served with an enforcement notice, it will read South Kansas District Council enforcement notice at the top. Uh, that is what we are required to do under the national uh, planning legislation. It has to be deemed breach of condition notice, enforcement notice, enforcement order. Yeah. Uh, I think Councillor Toomey has just explained that as well. So compliance is our term. So, um, but also she's made the point that planning enforcement is not statutory function, it is discretionary. Um, and then action is taken when it's expedient to do so and is proportionate to the case. Um, Sally Ann's made the point website uses both terms and I think you've just answered that, John. Um, Kate has come back and said, many thanks. Who can I speak to, please? So use the online form. <laughs> that would be great. Um, and then we will get it dealt with and you will be assigned your own personal officer. Um, you so that thank me, Kate. You can email me directly and say <laughs> thank you very much, John. Uh, Cool. I think I think that's the end of all of the questions uh, in the chat. Um, so we have, uh, I think, got 10 minutes left. So if anybody um, else has got any questions, then please do um, um, ask them now. Um, and I just want to show you quickly um, our website. Uh, so I'm going to try and um, share my my uh, my screen um, because I wanted to show you where you can find um, a little bit more information about uh, the team and the service so I don't know where do I share my screen is it under more no um, big green button ah, big green says. button <laughs> big green button that's the good one yeah okay cool thank you so hopefully that should show you okay so um just to show you, this is our Greater Cambridge Shared Planning, and uh, John obviously was showing, uh, or uh, Bev was showing you the compliance um, area. There's some really good uh, points here, so nice big buttons that you can press, and we've got planning compliance there, and that will take you to the page. So if you want to find out uh, more information, that's that's where you can go. Um, some people have said they don't know about the team. So if you search in the top, meet the team, just put meet the team in there, it will bring up a couple of things. So one will be about the team and I'll show you what's on there now. And one is about the ma development management area teams as well. So if I click on meet the team, 
that shows you our um, management team that we have in place at the moment. So we've obviously got Stephen, uh, who um, isn't here tonight, but normally attends um, myself. Um, Stephen, who's uh, just leaving us. Um, Philippa, who's our strategic sites. Uh, Nigel's off at the moment, but we have got another two members that are helping and they will be going on here shortly. Caroline, who's um, strategy and economy, John, who's planning policy, and Jane, uh, who's our built and natural environment manager. So um, they're all there and there's some information. If you click on them, you will find some information on, on them. Um, and then I think the other one that I wanted to pick up, so hopefully, oh, hopefully I can do the same again which is the area teams and I can't because I've got something stuck on my screen. So I'm going to do it this way. So again, I just clicked on Greater Cambridge Shared Planning and I brought up this. And then if you put area team in the search there, and it will bring you up the development management area teams. We quite often get questions about this. People ask us, you know, how do we find this information? It's really easy or you put it in the search and that brings up your area teams. So these are the development management. We've got now got an uh, east and a west team and that's replicated in compliance. So they are also east and west. And you've got area team east, which shows you the areas and the um, parishes and the city wards that are covered. And it's got all of your team members there. So you've got your development manager, Toby, and all of the team members. Um, so they're all listed for you. And the same with the area team west so it tells you what city wards are covered uh, what um, parishes are covered and it gives you the development manager and area manager and then all of your planning officers so um, your contacts um, are there they are on the website it's really easy to use i would encourage you to pass that information on again to residents that when they want to know things there is a lot of information on this website um, and it's really easy. You just click in there, search and you will find information. So I'm going to stop sharing now. Was that OK um, to me? Because I think you were keen that we shared that, weren't you? Uh, yes, that's fine. Thank you. I think it's, it's uh, you know, this came out because we had a parish council that was involved in a county councillor. Um, you know, trying to get hold of uh, some information. And actually they had made the right contact, but somehow I think they felt that <laughs> something could still be done. So please, you know, do make that relationship with the area team leaders. Uh, they should really be your first port of call if you have any concerns. Um, and then, you know, if, if that still isn't working, then the development manager, as you've seen in the list. And if all fails, box stops here <laughs> um you know and um you know we'll see who it is but definitely please follow follow the um you know follow that process so that um you know we officers time is not taken up unnecessarily thank you right so i think that leaves us with the last four minutes i did notice um that uh i think dennis sorry had asked a question i do apologize dennis so you've got development required a number of trees to be protected and they've died and the district council has subsequently bought the land. So John has asked if you fill the form in, please do fill that <laughs> E4 <laughs> with your address yes. and we will progress it and you will get and some photographs, you can upload photos with it as well. And please, yeah. I, I, I just want to emphasize it's really great if you can do that and use it and encourage people to use it mm. because it just goes into our system, which saves us so much time. Yeah. So please, please try and support it. Um, and then Mandy Pink has asked, can we share this information with our residents? Oh, yeah. Or yes, absolutely. Please. Yes, please, please, yes. thank you. Pass it on. <laughs> The video will be available on YouTube and Bev will send you out that link and that information and, uh, you know, please do pass it on. And the next thing, our final thing is what two items do you want us to talk about next time? Please do send us some ideas or send Bev some ideas or just put it in the chat. The, the chat. That would be really helpful. Yeah. So, um... Just say thank you everyone for um, 
spending this part of your evening with us. Hope you found it very useful. And um, just want to emphasize we're here to work with you. And uh, we'd also like you to work with us. And if there's anything else that we can do to do let us know. Thank you. Thank you all. I think you can stop the stop the recording now, Bev. There's some great stuff coming through. We've got drainage ditches and how to manage them, ditches and chalk streams. <laughs>